Tom, welcome to ODSC India. Pleasure to have you here. And Thank you. You've traveled quite the distance, all the way from Australia. That's right, yes. Uh, 14 hours on the plane. <laughs> oh, yeah, quite a long distance. Um, <laughs> but you've been a busy man here. You're giving both a talk and a workshop. That's right, yes. So can you please tell us um, what you're talking about, what the workshop is on, and uh, let people know okay. what your area of expertise is. So um, my expertise is in finance and using you know, intelligent and automated systems in financial applications like trading systems and so on. And my talk was really on are we there yet uh, with uh, fully automated, intelligent, uh, fully autonomous trading systems? And um, the short answer of the talk is not quite, but um, I was basically giving a nice overview where we're already using AI in trading and finance and also what are the roadblocks yet to come to like fully automated systems. So, um, it, you know, there's some really interesting topics there and it's all a little bit different from your usual AI stuff. And so um, the aim of that was also to show people what is different uh, in finance uh, than from conventional AI applications. Yeah, excellent. And I'm sure those were very well attended talk, uh, talks because um, I don't think I've ever met a data scientist who wasn't interested in trying to make money on Correct. the stock market. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it is quite difficult because, uh, you know, traditional quant finance is based on, you know, statistics and discrete math. And now you're mo moving into the world of uh, continuous algorithms, stuff like that. But, um, like, uh, how far advanced is the hype over the reality, like, say, using machine learning for, for finance? Do you think there's some real um, gains being made there? Excuse the pun. For sure. I mean, there is quite a few applications in different areas. Um, but they're also usually very specific. Uh, you know, for example, people use satellite imaging uh, to track the number of cars in front of a shopping center and then uh, look at like if there's a potential for the demise of that specific company and uh, trade on that. Or they look at the lids on, on oil tanks to see how full are the oil storage spaces and then trade, on, uh, trade the oil price on that. So these are you know, or, or sentiment analysis. So these are typical applications. But, you know, we could take that a step further and say, well, we managed to beat the world chess champion, the world go champion uh, in those things. Couldn't we apply this to trading systems? And people have tried that, but we're still a while away from that for various reasons, wi which I pointed out in my talk. One of them is that we have, we deal with a lot of noise in financial systems. And another is that whilst you're actually deploying these machines, you are changing the rules of the game, w which is not necessarily the case for chess or Go. And, and as you change the rules of the game, th the machine has to adapt to that, which is still a challenge for those systems. Oh, very interesting. Um, for those people out there who are interested in um, using their data science skills for finance, what are some good tools they can use for um, that? So um, obviously, uh, in terms of you know programming, langu programming languages, Python uh, learning that is really good because it's a language of data science and more and more in finance that's used as well. Um, so traditional languages like C++ are still strong, uh, but Python is really on the rise. And um, my workshop is actually about um, using one of the platforms called Quantopian um, for uh, basically building quant models and what's really good there is there's already uh, data provided for you um, as well as uh, a platform where you can test your models. So it takes all the really nitty gritty hard work out, but also the cost of market data is in fact really, really high and usually permissible for um, someone who wants to get into the field. So, uh, you know, that can really help people to get started in that area. Um, it's nice to uh, help people to get into this track. Yeah, no, absolutely, because um, data drives models, and right, without access to that data, then you're not going to have any models of that. Exactly, yes. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head because a lot of people going into finance for the first time, they don't realize the cost of this data and the licensing issues around it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. What are some other good sources of financial data that people can use for their data science modeling that you know of? Well, I mean, there's obviously all the sources that you pay for, which generally for uh, someone who wants to get started on their own is really expensive you know, and, and everyone knows the big names. Um, there's obviously more free sources. There's one called Quandl, um, which is an open source uh, database. Uh, there is also um, other 
providers. Uh, you know, Yahoo used to do this, but they're not doing it anymore. Um, and I, I think you know, Quandle uh, is is one of the really good ones. Um, at the moment, yeah, the, you know, there's there's a few other small ones, but um, um, I can't actually think of any. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a I'm problem. I'm not using them right now so much because I'm yeah. working with professionals. I used to call use something called the FRED database, the Federal Reserve Economic Database. I think it's something like 400 time series sets. So yes, FRED is a really nice yes. one to use as well, for sure. Um, Excellent. And that's got quite a lot of uh, things in there, of course. Um, so I mean, what what's good with something like Quantopian is there's a really a whole universe of equities and futures provided for you um, for free, which, which I, I think is a great place to start. Uh, you would probably pay up, up, upwards of $100,000 a year to get uh, your hands on those yeah. data. Yeah. And so how have you found OES India? You've been here two days now, right? Mm. How's it been so far? It was actually really, really amazing. Um, I know India from my times back uh, when I arrived in Bombay and uh, or Mumbai now. Um, and now coming to Bangalore is a really different experience. It's, it's a lot uh, more organized and clean here and, um, yeah. and really pleasant. And the conference is amazing. Um, I'm not saying this lightly, but I really think it's probably definitely one of the most well-organized conferences I've ever been to. So really, really enjoy this. Thanks to Naresh and his team. Um, yeah, and the attendees like a very educated audience here, and we're finding over the last couple of days, which is great. So, Tom, thank you very much for um, coming to ODS India, India from such a long distance, attending and speaking and doing a workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. Really a pleasure to be here. Very welcome. <laughs>